So, relational graph management, from, but from the perspective of Anchor Buoy. Who here uses Anchor Buoy? Yeah, you would Who doesn't? Who has, okay, so who hasn't really committed to a path? <laughs> really? Okay. Well, I'm going to make sure we finish this presentation later because we're going to Okay, what is this session about? Okay, it's about relational graph management, including the tables and table occurrences we have, and conventions around them, which is real important, and some related tips and tricks. However, what it is not about, oops, these things here. Building data relationships, a little about the, the data modeling and how to actually go about building relationships. We're not going to do that. We're not going to talk about primary and foreign keys here. We're not going to talk about one to many and many to many and join tables. We're not going to talk about data normalization theory. So two and two and a half of those have already been covered. So this is not about that at all. Um, I interviewed a lot of people a couple years for the Google for this session because I've done it at DevCon a couple times. And uh, I interviewed over 60 people for this. I really got on the phone and I got an email and I talked to all these different people. And a lot of them are good friends of mine, and they're all very generous. And it just kind of goes on. Okay? Four slides of people that I interviewed, so I gave them credit on it. Because um, a number of people apparently invented Anchor Buoy all at the same time. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, that's what I wanted. Thank you. But a number of people invented Anchor Buoy all, so came up with the idea simultaneously. But Kevin Frank, second one on the top there, uh, is the one who documented it in. Um, in PowerPoint and distributed it for FM Disk about five years ago and made popular presentation on which this presentation is built. However, the person who gets acknowledgement for actually um, coming up with the idea is uh, Roger Jakes, second from the top here. So he's the one who put the conventions around it, gave it the name, um, put some strong conventions around it, and you know, worked for Salian. And uh, I recognize him as the one who's made it. Uh, rich, thorough, and popular, and, and brought it out in the open. Although he, did, he at the same time, there's at least a half a dozen people doing it. And you're probably more familiar with that whole story than me, right? Uh, but, I would vote for Roger. Yeah, so that's pretty accurate. Right? <laughs> not that he was alone in it, but he did a better job of, make, of not only promoting it, but making it really uh, clear. And still to this day, Kevin's got the most well known presentation on it. So this is an attempt to update Kevin's presentation. Is there a reason why you wanted those lights on? Which of these? The, the, the lights that just went on. So one set of them was spotlights. Could I we turn off these? Spotlights. Um, this is I find it harder to read with all the lights. I can only do that. Turn the spotlights off. Yeah. Check that, check. that way we get the video working. Okay. So why do you want to know Anchor Buoy? Well, because there is a need for a logical approach to, to taming the relational graph. And there are a number of approaches out there. You know, we talk a little about recalling and there's come up with some multiple ideas. But the bottom line is you want something that's consistent, dependable, intuitive, easy, not only to follow but to remember and to reduce cognitive overload on the development. Mm -hmm. right? And to make cl collaboration a fluid um, thing. The cognitive overload is the big thing. I argue that with Anchor Buoy and the naming conventions that I'll go into probably on the second half of this session, that you can get it down so concise that you never, once the system is built and you're working in the system regularly and you've got your legend going, you can have this so memorized you never go into the graph to check out what the relationships are. Whatever context you're in, you could just start typing the keys and the underscores and, and call the names of the fields because you've had an entire thing memorized when you're working, especially if you're working consistently in the system. Now. You can even be a really large system so the conventions reduce the overload in the, uh, because they reduce the memory that you have to have to work with it. And then when you're working with other developers, if we all say that uh, we use three-letter naming conventions, if we all agree, what's the general abbreviation for customer? CST. CST. Okay, that was hard. But I said, how many people said anything else? No, nobody. Okay, staff. STF. STF. Yeah, that makes good. Study. STD. Yeah. That or, or, yeah, pretty <laughs> much. Sorry. And that um, stands for something else. Yeah. Yeah. I have daughters. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, something else. Oh, project. S STU. PRJ. Pro project. PRJ or PJT. PRJ. PJT PRJ. or PRJ. PRJ. Most of us have a PRJ. Hmm. Okay, here's a good one. Uh, representative. RPR. Go on. REP. What? REP. REP. Any others for representative? 
How about report? RPT. 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 Okay. So, I was hoping somebody would say RPT again. Okay. <laughs> Try to use that one. But you see pretty quick, you know that's represented, that's report, because I would always use RPT. So you start seeing collaboration really, really fast because the naming conventions are anyway, I haven't gotten into it. Um, and Anchor Buoy works really, really well with brief abbreviations. So these things are the reasons that you want to consider whatever your choice is in relational graph, even if it's not Anchor Buoy. But we'll go a little further. I'm going to choose a method of, of grouping the table occurrences so that the relationships in the graph have meaning under all conditions. They don't become ambiguous or um, irrelevant. Irreverent, irrelevant, or related. So we have some joking with the first one. Relevance and relationship are going to become almost synonymous in Anchor Buoy, where they're not in almost any other system. We want to provide an intuitive sense of context always. So no matter where you are in the system, or what you're doing in the system, or what dialog box, or what layout, or anything you're doing, the context will always be consistent. And as I said earlier, we want to minimize the reference to the graph, because you can memorize most of this stuff. The legend actually becomes in your head as well as physical legends will provide. And then the big one, really, the big ultimate one, is that you want it to make sense in scrolling lists. So when you're pulling a list of fields, and you, and you want to assign something to a, to a screen, when you're dropping a field in a layout, you want to know that the fields at the top are the ones that you can use, and the ones down below are not. It should be intuitive, so you don't have to hunt for them. They should be gathered for you, and found that can gather them for you. And then the argument of whether or not that's more important than the final one, I don't know. But reducing errors in development seems to be real important because if you have a convention that's not consistent and doesn't make sense and you're talking to the wrong table and you're getting the wrong found set and the wrong results and pulling the wrong IDs, then how useful is that whole system to you? And you could run into trouble. So we're going to run into some, uh, we're going to provide you with some definitions before we start up. Really, really, really simple definitions built on the data normalization and the architecture and the data modeling we're talking about. This is all just very simplistic, but I'm going to build on the theme. The table is a unique set of records and fields. Okay. There it is, uh, the table tab in the define database element in FileMaker. The table occurrence is hidden behind that. It's an instance of a table in the relational graph, also known as a TO. So a table, an occurrence, and a table are not the same thing. In the graph, that table occurrence company is one instance of the table, but there might be multiple instances of the company table by different names in the graph. And a relationship is where two or more table occurrences point to each other to build a relationship. These are not two tables in a relationship. These are two table occurrences in a relationship. Because the same tables will have other occurrences in other relationships. Simple stuff, but real important. A group of table occurrences is a discrete collection of table occurrences together in an area of the graph with some kind of convention around them that make them discrete. Typically, they contain relationships between them, the table occurrences in the table occurrence group, such as this. And typically, okay, very simple. And already getting the conventions, this is a company table, that's a, con a context table, this is a phone table, you're seeing some of the conventions ahead. That's one table occurrence group because they're all related and nothing else is related to them. So they become a discrete group. And a group is a, alert, uh, a loose um, description of what they are. It's not like a hard-coded thing. So we just refer to it as a group. Typically, a layout is tied to one table occurrence, right? Well, it always is. In FileMaker, it used to be in pre-7 that a um, layout was always tied to the file that you're in, right? But now that we have multiple tables in the file, you're not tying a layout to a table, you're tying it to a table occurrence. Another important thing, right? Your layout's based on a table occurrence, which could be one of many table occurrences related to that base table. So it's important to have a convention where you base your layouts on a table occurrence that's reliable. Hi, Patty. Okay. So this is how it actually works. One table has one to many, you can kind of do it like an ERD possibly one to many table occurrences. And each table occurrence may have, uh, in theory, exist only in one table occurrence group. They didn't put 